I've been here before. I've seen this town and I've run these trails. Some of them, at least. Four years ago, I ran the 28 kilometer version of the Festival Trail Semwa in the Belgian Ardennes. This time, I'm going for 55 kilometers, the longest distance at this event. I made a strong start, comfortably settling into a quick but reasonable pace. And there's not much to say about the first half of the race. My favorite part of it was a steep descent that I did not catch on camera, where, by taking a bit of risk, I managed to overtake about a dozen more careful runners in less than a minute. Some of the less action-packed scenes along the trail were certainly enjoyable too. But really, my race started around kilometer 30. With the cool morning hours behind us, and a never-ending sequence of small but steep hills ahead, keeping cool started to get hard. I honestly don't know if little mistakes like forgetting to pour water over your head at an aid station have much of a physical effect. But realizing that I made that mistake certainly did not help my mental state when I started to struggle. Why do climbs always seem longer than descents? After half an hour or so of suffering, I found a new rhythm, slower but sustainable, allowing me to keep my body temperature and hydration levels under control. At kilometer 37, our course linked up with the route of the 28 kilometer race, which had started four hours later. In the few kilometers after I passed that point, I was overtaken by some of the fastest 28k runners. And after that, it quickly got busier on the trails as more of the pack caught up with me. When I ran the 28 km race last time, I remember talking to a 55k runner somewhere around here. We were going at a similar pace at that point, and I could not wrap my head around the fact that she had already completed a full marathon distance. I could not imagine ever doing such a thing myself. How things can change in a few years. Another hot day, though the heat was less extreme this time around, and now I was the ultra runner getting passed by and getting respect from those doing a shorter distance. My legs were feeling a bit burned up but to an acceptable degree for this point in the race. Unusually though, our feet also looked as if they were burning. Some of the most beautiful parts of the trail came towards the end. One moment you are looking down on a glorious horseshoe bend in the Semois River below. A few kilometers later, you're wading through it. And then, after just a little climb, you're up on a ridge in between the arms of the horseshoe. Unfortunately, the trees block the view on most of the ridge. Although, it's probably best to keep your eyes on the road anyway, on these rocky trails. I remember this hill. It almost defeated me last time. Back then, I had neither a GPS watch, nor the habit of studying a race course on the map beforehand, so I did not realize how close to the finish it is. I remember that at several points I had to stop to catch my breath, contemplating whether I should quit the race. But I didn't quit that time. And with four extra years of training and experience, there was absolutely no reason to think about quitting this time. Sure, I was feeling the effort, but I felt in control of the situation and well prepared to lay siege on the castle. It's rare that you get to compare yourself to your past self. Of course, you could run the same race again, or the same distance for a road race, and it might be faster or feel easier, proving the progress you've made. What's more difficult 
is to compare how you handle yourself close to your limits. And with similar weather and a longer version of the same trail, I felt similarly pushed to my limits. I was pretty proud of how I handled it last time. I still am. But this time I did better. And rarely does progress feel so tangible.